Good morning, everybody. This is the One Thing or Another podcast. Mark, your host here, and we're doing um we're doing a video this week because not because it's like that's what everybody's doing, and they are, by the way. But no, I just thought this is kind of a like a, a monumental time in our lives and our experiences, and I figured why not? Rick and I used to record our podcasts every week, going back in the day, old school stuff, you know. Not as far back as we can go mark that'd be like old school 35 years ago stuff this would be like recent as of what four six, years ago five, maybe five, we well were, certainly five, four or five years ago yeah time goes so fast yeah. it does well, like, it does facebook reminds me how fast time goes because it'll go like oh i, I published this book five years ago and i'm thinking holy shit five years and now i saw you got a new book coming out that's exciting i do i do and I will it's donate. exciting. I, well, all proceeds are being donated to me. And they should be. Oh, here's to our coffee. We used to do that, too. My mug is a Nashville, Tennessee mug to, today that my, I'm drinking. Mine is, mine is from, <clears throat> it Uh-oh, doesn't have a name on it, but it's from um, uh, Lancaster, Pennsylvania, the train station there. We had such a fun time. The train station? The train station. Oh, I was going to say, that's the land of the Amish, isn't it? Yes, it is. They were Amish people. We went in a buggy and stuff. Now, I'm one of these, (laughs) I'm now one of these essential workers. Whoever thought that I would be an American hero? I had no anticipation of this. You know, Mark, I'm appreciative you're having on the show, and I want to comment on that because I was thinking the other day, if we put out the Time 100 list, who would be the time person of the year? And I said, it's a grocery store worker. Another friend said it's a medical worker. It could be any of the above. Yeah, but, but it's yes, always indeed, a you're... medical worker. Like it's always a medical worker. It doesn't matter. Yeah, we yeah. don't. You don't need a pandemic for people to, you know, thank the military for their service or talk about how the first responders are superheroes. You know, the, I, I, job. I, so I don't agree with that one. I just don't. I, I think it's. I think you're right in this particular case because the medical, like I said, when this is over, the medical workers are still going to be like heroes. I mean, that's just what, yes. that's how we see them. But the grocery- Did we even I, put this in context that we're talking about the coronavirus and COVID-19? Did well, we? no, but that's the only thing we, that's the only thing we're going to talk about, the only thing there is to talk about. And I'm, you know, I'm going to work five days, at actually five days a week now at the grocery store to make sure everybody has food and um, all of that stuff. And it's, uh, it's, it's pretty stressful, but I'm telling you, I'm so glad I'm working because I would lose my mind not working. I cannot just sit around the house. I would go crazy. You know, when we look back at this time, we'll all have our personal journeys with it. I happen to be in northern Wisconsin. I live in Madison, but I'm three and a half hours north to an area you know very well, Mark. You used to come visit this when you were writing some television work with me. And I made the decision, you know, on a daily basis, things are changing. And I want to hear about your grocery escapades for sure, because uh, uh, I've tuned out. And like I said, when we started the show, I really got joy seeing your face this morning because intentionally I've given you your space and your time, even in our friendship to do what you need to do. Poked out a few texts to you saying, I love you. And I'm thinking about you, but I was trapped up here on a daily basis. Vilas County uh, is the County of the oldest citizenship in the state. So three days ago when I was up here, they put out a warning saying basically a County warning saying you're not allowed back into this County. If you come from a high risk County, which I'm from, yeah, unless you uh, self quarantine for 14 days. So at that point I made the decision to talk to my family. I decided to stay up here. So I have not been back in Dane County for well over a week. Um, But to your point, I would have went stir crazy because I live by myself down there up here. At least I'm with family and, and all those good things. Yeah. And I've got Frank and he's, he's been retired for a few years and he's super busy all the time. So it's it's different for me. I've always known that even when I retire, which will be in a few years, I'm still going to work part time, uh, partly for some extra cash. But I'm I'm not somebody who can stay busy all the time. I, I I'll put three or four more hours in my computer every morning, as you know. I'm people yeah. say, people like, what are you doing at four o'clock in the morning? Well, I'm, you know, I'm up and I'm doing shit. <laughs> but when that's over by nine ten o'clock, that's it. <laughs> Like what else yeah, your day ends with mine starts. Yeah. Well, you know, they say it's just really been a hard time for people that are extroverted. I consider you certainly more of an introvert. Um, but for someone like me who wants to be around people, these these are tough times. Uh, you know, I'm a huge hugger. I don't know why. I just like to touch people and be touched. And so it's been strange. I intentionally find myself, Mark, every day going to the local grocery store up here just to see people. Even if I just buy one thing of ice cream, I'm just going because I'm going. I'm telling you, some people at the store, 
uh, I work at the Giant, which is a large store, but I know that there are people that are going there because there's nowhere else to go. Really? Oh, yeah. It's like, what am I going to do today? Well, at least I can go to the grocery store because I see customers (laughs) there like every day. That's crazy. And we are are finally taking, because Frank has been concerned about me for a few couple weeks. And say, oh, like, yeah. Well, 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 like, what are they doing there? What are the precautions they're taking? So finally, as of, you know, Sunday, the cashiers all have plexiglass. It's not bulletproof, I don't think. Oh, wow. But it is plexiglass between them and the customer. So there's really? no, you're not directly talking to them. Wow. Uh, which is great. And they're all wearing gloves now. I've been saying for three weeks, why aren't the cashiers wearing gloves? And then in the deli where I work, it's, it's now all grab and go. You cannot go up to the counter now and say I, I want a pound of, of ham you have to buy it prepackaged, or put your order in a kiosk um, which you could do before there's no over-the-counter handoffs anymore and i good. think that's really good too because uh, a lot of deli workers are older i've noticed that for a long time i think it has to do with reliability we're reliable people you you get a high schooler in there or a young person in there they call in sick because they want to go to the beach so the deli tends to have older people working in it that makes um, sense. Well, I do believe yeah. this is the year if Time Magazine did put out his top 100 and listed the person of the year, it would be the essential worker, specifically the grocery worker. Um, unsung heroes, certainly, in our society. I also think that I'm I'm hoping that when this is passed, that some of these measures that we're taking now to be a less contagious society will continue. I really do. Yeah. Because... Yeah. I would love to, we could think of how how much we could lower the incidence of influenza. How many, because that takes a high toll too. A lot of people, I was getting really annoyed with people comparing this to, to the flu and going like, you know, 20,000, 30,000 people die a year. This ain't nothing. Uh, it's not the same. And trying to explain it to them is not going to, was not effective. But um, we could certainly lower the incidence of influenza by just yeah, washing if, our hands if, and wearing gloves. You know? For sure. And if they, you know, we've started some of that with hand sanitizers everywhere you went, you know, that was done a few years ago, but you're right. If they put up these plastic sheets, leave them up. You know, why would they go through all this work? I know at our local store, Woodman's down in Madison, they put uh, dispensers, you know, uh, sanitizer dispensers. Of course, it has to be 70% more of the sanitation part than the liquid, but they put those uh, behind every teller or checkout person. And I think that's critical. You know, when you look at it historically, and we will look back at this, and to your point, what changes will this make that become uh, permanent? Um, what mental things have we learned? And part of me is like, two comments here real quick, Mark. If we've asked to be distanced, and we have by the choices we've made to be social media people, to text and not call, to um, virtually talk to people on FaceTime, then maybe it's like being thrown in our face, like, okay, you want a virtual world? I'll give you a virtual world. The second thing I thought about is my niece, and not to get highly emotional, but I, I think of someone like her who's 18, my niece Haley, my brother's kid, who you know. Think of her. She was born in 2001. So this is the generation graduating high school right now that were born on 9-11 year and are ending their high school life in COVID-19 year. So it's really interesting. Prom was canceled for yesterday. They're not able to walk at graduation. So what does this mean um, for that generation? Um very interesting stories to be told. Yes. And um, I forgot I got lost there. So well, there's a lot to think about. I'll tell you that for sure. There's there so is, many layers to this. You there know? is. And I, I, I also hope that um, when this is passed, I don't have high hopes because of the realities of the society we're living in and politics and all of that stuff. But it would be nice if we could come out of this more compassionate for each other. Like when I, I was writing about Trump on Facebook today, and I made it clear I'm not talking about his supporters. I have absolute, utter contempt for this man. But that does I don't have contempt for his supporters. And I was seeing like these things on Facebook from, because I have friends and family of, various persuasions they're not i don't live in i don't live in a liberal bubble bubble um at least not on facebook (laughs) and i well actually anywhere because i work with people who i know are trump supporters or conservatives and they're great people they're fine people so i'm not i'm not contemptuous of them and but i was seeing these things like memes about how well those those trump haters they better be sending those stimulus checks back 
you know, return to sender. And I, I would never do say that. No, but I would never say that about them because the Trump supporters, I mean, the, the Trump haters have children, just like the Trump supporters have children. They, we, they need food. They need to pay their rent. Like, stop hating each other for God fucking sake. I'm so tired of it. And I don't know if that's how much that's going to change, but I hope it does. You know, I hope so, too. You know, they look at it from the political perspective that this is nonpartisan. But yet, you know, we're having the stimulus bill being held up in one house versus the other. And, you know, who knows? I just look at the bigger picture again. I look at the societal thing. And like I said, I just can't wait for it to be over. What I have learned is serenity. Both you and I know the term well, having uh, myself personally been in a 12 step program for 35 years. And this just reminds me, Alan, how that is. This just reminds me, you really have to take it one day at a time. And as you and I have heard, sometimes one hour at a time, Mark, I'm not going to lie. I have literally had to take this one hour at a time or I would go crazy. So um, oh, yeah, I'm looking I, forward. I, I, go ahead. Well, I'm looking forward to the hours after and how we rebuild and how we analyze to your point and how we look at the new order of the world. Yeah, it, it is certain, certainly having... Um... Bringing, bringing me into perspective. Well, time, like I said, time passes so fast. I'm always, I'm really aware of that. The older I get, the more, I, the more I'm aware of how, how much less time I have. And I think this is the kind of thing that can bring one into focus on what really matters in life. What does what really Amen. matters in life? Mm -hmm. um, it's not gonna. That's not gonna work for a lot of people, but it will for some people. I think so. I want to also comment. Hey, Mark, look here. Cheers. Cheers. Coffee more time. This reminds me so much of the show we used to do. We were always on video like this. I know. And what's day. funny is it's been so long since I did this <laughs> that I got to remember how to process the video. I can't remember. Oh. <laughs> it should be. It should be. No, but the, I don't remember. I'm going to have to try it. If it doesn't work, we'll just do. I'll just put the audio up. But I'm going to try to do the video. Put that up on my my totally dead yeah. YouTube channel. That's so funny. Well, God, you once were a YouTube sensation. If you don't know, guys, your 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 show host here, Mark, was a, did a video about cubicle life back when he worked in the corporate world, and it was millions of people saw it. So you'll find that yeah. hopefully. On yeah, YouTube that was channel. my but heyday back when I when was, was somebody. I want to let our uh, your listeners also know that little secret. Mark did forget to turn go or push play, so. You do know how to do it, Mark, because after 15 minutes into the show today, Mark's like, okay, I got to push play. No, so we had a little like reset there. Minutes. Oh, I'm being exact. You know, I'm Rick Rose. We tell a good story here. <clears throat> you want to, here's a fun thing. We're, we have to take the, the, we have two cars because I have to drive to work and <clears throat> we live in the woods, but Frank was, there was like this noise under the car and he had roll, he had driven over like a log, not a giant log, but a log. Oh, no. Oh, they fall. No. We have a lot of, when we have a windstorm here, a lot of stuff comes down from the trees. And like, what is that sound? What is that sound? So we got home and I looked under there and he had hit this log just right so that it's jammed up under the car. Oh, no. Oh, no. How are so you going to get it out of there? Well, we're taking it to the mechanic. He's You're going to drive it with a log under it? Oh, yeah, it can drive and it's only into town. Oh. So we take it in there and he can put it up on the hydraulic and get the log out of there. Oh, my God. That is kind of funny. Hey, I just did the Fauci look. Oh, my God. I, I read that he was touching himself. I mean, his face. He, well, he was because Trump made some stupid comment. We're talking about Dr. Fauci, guys, who's one of our heroes, Mark's in mind. He's been with us way back to the HIV and AIDS days, and he is currently one of the leaders in uh, recognized the pandemic here in the United States. There's a new woman member of the team, too, Mark, who goes way back to 1983 as well. She was on the press conference last night, but she is the leader of the task force here in the States up till now. I think she's worked in three or four administrations as well and um, ha had a role that Obama pointed to as the head of HIV and AIDS on the global level. So we have the right people doing what they need to be doing. If we trust them and we let them do their thing, I guess I got to be honest now that I'm verbalizing this, that that's kind of where I feel some safety. You know, like I recognize this is very different than HIV and AIDS, but I also recognize that in that pandemic, it took a long, long time for things to start to happen. There were a lot of unknowns. I do also recognize because of that heritage and that history, and because of heroes like this, we are able to get through this a little faster. And so for that, I'm extremely grateful. I'm also grateful for technology, Mark. If there was no technology, the technology we had 10 years ago, oh, we yeah, this would be where, really where would our contact be? We wouldn't even be able to look at each other right now. So We'd have to read books. Grateful. Can you imagine? 
I'd read all Mark McNeese books. That's all I would read. <laughs> and um, what was I going to say? Oh, the governors. Yeah, the, some governors are doing great. Cuomo's doing really good. People love him. Yeah, uh, yeah, because he's a straight talker. That's what we we really need, straight talkers. Now, with the stock market, I want to touch a little bit on that. Frank has always reminded me <clears throat> that you only lose when you sell. So, you know, people going like, oh, because my, my, reti my, my retirement accounts are down like $13,000. Sure. So, but and, unless you sell it, it's going to go back up. So if you can right afford, on. if you can afford to let it sit there for another two, three years or less, I hope it's going to go back up. So just, just, you know, stop thinking this mindset of, oh my gosh, I've lost, you know, half my 401k. If you don't touch it, it'll come back. My other thing though, if, I mean, if you can, a lot of people apparently have sto have stocks instead of cash. And like, if they need cash right now, they're fucked. Cause they got yeah, you should always have some liquidity in your savings for sure. But the other thing I was going to say too, is that <clears throat> with me, when it's back up, I'm converting it all to cash because I wonder too, like when you're mm. 69, 70, 72, why do you even have stocks? How long do you think you're going to live? Why don't you just turn that all into cash? And then you don't have to worry about this kind of thing happening. Put, turn it into cash. By the time you're 70, you know, Stop trying to make another hundred dollars a month or some shit like that. Cash it out, not 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 withdraw it, but turn it into cash. That's what I think people should do. Because I'm like, somebody close to me had said, you know, my 401k is terrible and blah 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 blah. And he's like in his 70s. I'm like, why do you even have stocks? You know, yeah, you it's be... interesting. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. And your husband's point is right on. But I've talked to people this week that range from, you know, my nephew who's saving at 18 on up to. A friend of mine who's 67 onto my mom who's 78 and my 67 year old friend she uh in the 2007 uh shift in our economy she certainly knew your point and she did a lot and converted a lot to cash but not all of it so she's at a really high risk point my other friend who's 61 lost five hundred thousand dollars over the last few days she's one that's looking but she also does realize hey i'm 61 i'm healthy i've got some time it's people like my mom I am concerned for, for various reasons. So they are still a high-risk group. From what we know, that risk may change from day to day as testing still, you know, proves results that we need to learn from. You're, but you are you're right. jiggling. Um, you're jiggling your legs. I know. I get, get my legs it are going. It I makes get excited the camera jiggle. Go ahead. I'm, I'm just telling you because you're jiggling. <laughs> I know. But anyway, it, but then you have people like me, to be quite frank, guys, and to be totally authentic this morning, I'm just not a saver. You know, I, I have money that goes into a 401k. I do know, not to sound arrogant or confident, that I will be one of those people, and many of us are, that will never be left on the street. Uh, I know that even my friend Mark and Frank will take me in their home should I That's face that. we got a room upstairs waiting for you. So sweet. So sweet. So in that regard, I live my life right now, and I uh, stay in the moment. That's your point here, too, even financially. Stay in the moment, right? Yep, and your hair is dark again. Yeah, I don't color it anymore, Mark. You were yeah, doing the Blade yeah. Runner look there for a little bit. Oh, yeah, I was super white, wasn't I? Like yeah. silver or, you know, silver foxish. Um, how are you doing with your health? Are you finding some time to get out in the great outdoors? Or what are you doing Well, we, we walk. Of course, I walk at work. But we go for walks. We went for a long 90-minute walk. Because Frank walks every single day. I walked, nice. We walked for an hour and a half yesterday in the rain. Mm. We're going to go for a walk today when we leave the car at the mechanics. Because we can walk at this river trail. That, so, yeah, my health is fine. <clears throat> you know that I certainly don't want to get sick. Um, I don't blame you. I love that you brought back some historic podcasts too. You just uh, on this podcast here, you just played your the interview with your sister. Holistic, she's like a holistic healer, and those are nice to have in these day and age. Too, and those you know? are six years ago. Wow, good stuff there too. I listened yeah. to it last night, by the way. Oh, thank you. Now, yes. uh, let's wrap it up so I can depart here and get my get some clothes on. Get, get your what log do, out. What do you think I'm wearing? Car. What do you think I'm wearing below camera? I, I don't want to know. I haven't even <laughs> thought about it, but thank you. <laughs> please comment below. Hey, and watch the show. Everything is going to be okay. Everything's going to be okay. This is a moment in history. No, no, I mean, we... no, 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 no. There's a TV show called Everything's Going to Be Okay. Oh, oh, really? Okay. It's really, Everybody really will. good. Well, I've been watching Love is Blind, which I'm sure is very different than Everything's Going to Be Okay. Yeah. So. There you go. There's a lot of binging going on, a lot of TV watching going on. I'm not a TV viewer, as you know, but being up here, um, I can walk in the beautiful outdoors or I can sit and watch TV. I've found a balance of both, so that's been good. Okay, Rick. I don't know like how 
much we covered in this, but we talked. That's what it's all about. We and make some, your best face. We did some video stuff. We I look really good, by the way, in my little tiny little <laughs> thing up there. You look fantastic. Your lighting is awesome. It's but I'm way, I'm way too heavy. I gotta I gotta focus this year on. But if that's it, it's so. Speaking of binging, it's really like the I'm an anxiety eater. I eat when I'm anxious. And what else am I? I'm like anxious all the time now because of yeah, all this people, shit. You've seen a lot of memes going around too, showing what what life is going to be like after the COVID goes away. We're all going to be fat fucks, but that's oops. I swore. That's okay. All right. Well, listen. I, you know we're going to be catching up at the end of April, and I I hope it's really different. Yeah, Mark, Mark, thank you. Mark always has me on as a guest, guys, to kind of wrap up the month. And to your point, there was really only one thing to talk about wrapping up this month. That's for sure. It goes down in history. All right. I will uh, text you soon, and I'll get this up as soon as I can. You know, hopefully, as on YouTube. If not, it'll be on the podcast. So look forward to seeing you there. Regular format. Ciao. Bye, guys. Mark, take care. Bye. Bye.